Yo, what is up everybody? Jumping here and I am back on some Neo 2 and today I'm going to be showing you guys my Tanfa tank build. This build is incredible, but I will say that the concept of this build is the most important thing because this is going to be a build all about health regeneration and because of that you don't necessarily have to use Tanfas. Now you might want to switch up your armor and pick different things depending on what weapon you're using, but any fast swinging weapon will work with this type of build because it is extremely consistent. I will say that the dual swords is probably the second best choice, but I chose the Tonfas because they are pretty much the fastest weapon in the entire game, so they definitely work really well. Now if this video is somewhat long, I will be putting timestamps in the comments and in the description if you want to skip around because I'll really go into great detail talking about everything I could possibly talk about. So keep that in mind. If you want to skip around, just use the timestamps. Alrighty, let's go ahead and do this. I'm in a mission. We're going to fight some bosses here. But this is not level synced currently. I want to show this at full power. So if you look at my health, I'm at 6,522, which is a crap ton of health. Now I will be running a mission at the end of this video where I will level sync it so you can see that as well. But for now, we're going to be at full power. To kind of demonstrate this all right so first things first i'm going to go ahead and buff up and then we are going to go and wreck these enemies and these bosses now this is a popular mission people like to farm this for experience so i chose this just because why not one cool thing about this build is that you can apply the confusion effect really easily because of the tonfa guns and there's a couple other things that you can do but yeah the tonfa guns can actually apply fire which is cool and that's something i really like and it is really powerful as well. So let's go ahead and wreck this boss. And then I kind of have a little secret as well that I like to do with this build. To kind of go absolutely ridiculous. Now if you pay attention to my health regen, you're going to see numbers popping up like crazy. That is kind of the main concept of the build. Alright, so first things first, let's apply our effect. Now we can go ahead and use this, which is now going to put confusion on this guy. And he will get absolutely wrecked. Alrighty, so I mean just look at the numbers. Look at all that health regen. It is crazy. And there is something too that's really crazy. And you're going to see that when I talk about the skill customization. Because the entire time there when I was doing my ability, I was actually draining my health. But it doesn't matter because I'm gaining so much health back because of the health regeneration. It doesn't matter that I'm draining my health. I don't even notice it. So that is insane. Alright, so I'm going to go back to the menus now and I'm going to break down the build and tell you everything that you need to know. Alrighty, well, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're going to talk about, which is the most important thing, is how to get the health regen. Because that is what's going to make you basically invincible. As you are attacking, you're going to be healing yourself. And the faster you can attack, then you're going to heal even more. So Tonfas are great for that, that's why I chose them. Dual swords are great, the Kurigama would be great, patches probably, a lot of low stance attacks would be great. So you have options here. Obviously you would probably want to change your build around slightly with your set bonuses and stuff for different weapons. But let's talk about it. So the main thing we're using here is Life Recovery Amarita Absorption. Now this effect can come on both of your accessories. Luckily it can come on the Yazakani Magatama. That's the best accessory in the game obviously. You're guaranteed to get this once you beat New Game Plus, so everyone should be able to get it. And you can put Life Recovery and Marita Absorption on this. Now, not every accessory can get this. There's only two other ones that I know for sure that can. One is the Wise General's Pillbox, and then the other one is the normal Magatama accessory. Now, there could be more that can get it. I'm not exactly sure. If you know the answer to this, you can leave a comment to help people out. But I've tried a whole lot to get it on the ones that have set bonuses because of the Yazakani Magatama. It would be nice to put this on and I could get that two-piece bonus. Auto life recovery critical, that would be awesome. And also the other one is really good too. That one is faster movement, enemy killed. This is like a tiger sprinting scroll. You run really quickly after you kill an enemy. It's really nice. But I've tried to get that life recovery on both of these and it just never popped up. So I don't think you can. Like I said, the ones I know for sure is Yazakani, Wise General's Pillbox, and then the other one is the normal Magatama. And then the final thing you can get is on the chest piece. 
Every chess piece can get this if you're tempering. You normally will see it pretty quickly. I've never had a problem getting it on the chess piece. And because it has max familiarity, once you have that, then it's going to be 36. So if you add it all up right now, it's 68. Every time I attack an enemy, I'm going to be getting 68 health back. And if you attack really quickly, then it's going to add up to be incredible. Now, I'm not exactly sure, but it's possible that maybe you can get that life recovery as an inheritable on the chess piece. If that was the case, if you could actually dupe that with revenants or whatever, and then put that on every single piece of armor, that would be incredible. You would be talking about getting 200-something life back every single time you attack an enemy. That would be insane. But I'm not seeing that yet, so I'm not sure if that is possible. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the spells because that is the other really important thing when it comes to actually doing this concept. Because like I said, this is a Tonfa build, a tank build, but we are actually kind of using a concept here, which is the life recovery and becoming invincible. Now, to really pull this off, you have to use the Extraction Talisman. Now, luckily, the Extraction Talisman has a really good duration to it, especially if you have a lot of magic power. So if you level up your magic, or if you put magic power on everything you have, then you can definitely make this last a very long time. I only have two equipped. I feel like I only ever really need two. I will always make it to a shrine if I have two. Most of the time, I'll make it there with just one. And if there's a level without a shrine, I will definitely beat the level, even with killing every enemy, with two. So that is great. The thing is, is that the Extraction Talisman makes it so that anytime you hit the enemy, you're going to get Amarita. So that's how you really abuse that life recovery, is using the Extraction Talisman. Now I'm going to talk about the rest of my magic because I'm already on the page. So let's go ahead and I'll talk about that. I like to use the Luckbringer Talisman, mainly because I like to get drops. I like to get smithing text. I don't have this currently equipped because what I do is I just go directly into the menu and I just use it. And I have other stuff on. The numbers can be adjusted. You can use different stuff. I'm not saying you have to use any of this stuff. But this is kind of what I would probably recommend. The Purification Talisman, I 100% recommend this though. If you're going to use a fast swinging weapon. Because first of all, you're going to actually do a really good key damage to yokais. That's great. But this is really universal. This can work against humans. I don't think you'll get the bonus to the key damage, but you can apply this really quickly. So if you're using another element where I'm using a soul core to buff my weapon as well, plus I have Tonfa guns, which can apply fire, I can easily put confusion on the enemy. Once you confuse an enemy, that enemy is dead. If it's a normal enemy, it's going to die instantly. And if it's a boss, if you're able to spam attacks at that point, you will absolutely melt the boss. So Confusion is great, but I think that Purification Talisman is really nice because it's universal and it applies really, really quickly. Now the other one that I recommend for additional buffs, one would be Steel Talisman. If you're making a tanky build, the Steel Talisman just makes sense. Now I normally don't use this though, I feel like I don't need it. So a lot of times I'll take it off and I'll just like grab like more Rejuvenation Talismans, more Barrier Talismans. You know, you don't really even need, like, a ton of Purification Talismans. I think that when it comes to the Purification Talisman, you need one to start the mission, and then you need one for maybe the boss. Because if you are using a Soul Core to buff your weapon, which I'm going to show that as well, but if you're doing that, then you really don't need a weapon buff all that much. But if you want to apply Confusion, it's really nice to start with one buff, apply that, use the Soul Core, buff your weapon, and then apply the second element really quickly barrier talisman this is one of the best buffs in the entire game it will dramatically increase your key recovery speed it will dispel yokai realms it is great 100 percent recommend this and then rejuvenation talisman that is obviously good for this we want as much health regen as possible and this of course makes a lot of sense now i am using the weakness talisman but i'm not using the sloth talisman once again you can use it if you like I'll be honest with you, for New Game Plus, I'm really not a big fan of Sloth. First of all, I don't really feel like I need it. Weakness Talisman is really nice because it will weaken the enemy. This will also apply a lot better to the enemies. That's something I've noticed. 
And it has a way better duration than Sloth. Sloth tends to run out, even with really high magic, Sloth will always run out before weakness will. So what I like to do is have enough magic power so that when I'm playing co-op, I can actually apply the weakness talisman to the boss with just one talisman. I don't want to use two, because that is something that can happen in co-op. And then it's going to have a nice duration to it. Like I said, I just personally feel like I don't need Sloth. And if you have friends that you like to play with, one friend could actually use sloth and then the other one could use weakness that's something that me and my friend has done for literally years now and then the final thing i have equipped currently is the quick change talisman once again this could be something else if you want to use it but quick change is awesome if you die you come back to life to be honest with you i don't know if i've ever died with this build it's that consistent as long as i'm attacking i'm not dying but just in case i do like to have quick change it is amazing because you come back to life. So that's the main ninja ability I like to use. Now let's go ahead and talk about the skills. I'm going to try to make this quick because there's not like a lot to talk about. There are plenty of moves that you can grab and use if you like. I chose not to grab those moves because I actually went for some melee mastery. So if you want to get some extra moves, just don't go for the melee mastery and grab those extra moves. Mainly, I went for a lot of passives. Pretty much, I grabbed every passive I could possibly get. The only ones I didn't really get was the ones that talk about whenever you go to critical status. But, out of all of them, I would say that cornered boar is probably your best choice. Because this will give you defense, some damage reduction when you get low health. So, if that does happen, this will help you stay alive. And then, if you're attacking, you're going to get all your health back. And, yeah. So... Out of all of them, this is the one I would probably recommend. The offensive one, you're not really going to benefit from this because you're going to heal yourself. Same with this one. With the key recovery, you are going to really not benefit from this because you're going to heal yourself. But every other passive is good. Now, the two main skills I'm using, one is Demon Dance. This is going to be your bread and butter. This is the most DPS that you're going to do. So this is the main move. You can do this from every stance as well. So I like to stay in high stance. And that's because of my Guardian Spirit. I'll talk about that in a moment. But the Guardian Spirit is amazing in high stance. It's amazing in any stance, but high stance is the best. So I like to stay in high stance. So I do a lot of Demon Dancing. And also I use a lot of Devastation. Now Demon Dance can be used from any stance. Devastation can be used from any stance. And this will allow you to use your Tonfa Guns. Tonfa Guns are extremely powerful. And they can apply fire. So these are my two main moves I like to do. And outside of that, I just do normal heavy attacks or light attacks, and it will absolutely dominate. Now let's talk about skill customization. I brought this up before, but what I want to talk about is I do want to actually talk about what I have on here. So on Devastation, remember, this is for Tonfa Guns. What I recommend is actually imbuing this with fire. Because this can actually apply fire when you use the Tonfa Gun, it's only going to apply so much though. If you actually have it imbued with fire, if you actually hit them with the devastation move and then you explode the Tonfa gun, that alone for a lot of enemies that are not resistant to fire will apply the fire. There are other ways you can actually help build that up. Burn accumulation is another one that's really good because I'll give you an example. There's like some human enemies that it might take three Tonfa guns to actually apply fire to them. If you have burn accumulation and you have this imbued with fire and you're hitting them directly with this, it probably will only take you two. So that's better than three. That's why I have this. But I would recommend imbuing this with fire just so that you can apply fire a lot easier with the Tonfa guns. And then the other main one I have here is Raging Strike. Now Raging Strike will give you a 20% damage buff. Now Demon Dance is my main DPS. But this will make you take damage. And let me tell you, if you don't have the health regeneration, this will drain your health so fast. It is ridiculous. But because we have so much health regeneration, especially when we are demon dancing, you will not even notice this. It is insane. I'm telling you right now, try using this without actually having the health regeneration and you are going to watch your health drop instantly. Then have the health regeneration and use this and you will not even notice it. It is that good. But 20% is a lot. I'll give you an example. I talked about this before and I do like this move as well. This actually is the 
secret boss skill. You can get this from Hanzo in the Grandmaster Tonfa Dojo mission. But if you are going for a grant a damage bonus based off your stat, this is uh, obviously very popular. The thing is, is that if you have 99 in that stat, so I have 99 constitution and I also have 99 stamina, this is only a 5% buff. So it's not great, it's better than nothing, so I say use it. But 20% is a really big buff if you want to compare those two. So that's why Raging Strike is so amazing. But all of the other ones, like this, for example, will have a big downside. Draining your health is a big downside most of the time. Are not being able to keep holes. Are not actually having an element on your weapon. There's another one. I think it's 5% for key damage and damage, but you actually will remove the element from your attack. So, you know, all of that, they all have downsides. So, because of that, I say that these are really good and you should be using these. But 20%, if you can actually use it and not suffer the downside, is insane. Now, I didn't talk about the Grand Master skill or the Mystic Arc. And the reason why is because, honestly, I'm not really a big fan of either of them. Now, this one is actually really good. It's good for dodging, though. If you want to dodge attacks, this is great. It lets you cancel out of attacks to go into Demon Dance. But to be honest with you, I just don't really see the benefit of it. Because I don't really need to dodge. I can just tank everything. So because I don't need to dodge attacks. I just let enemies hit me. I don't really care. And then it doesn't really affect me. In terms of being able to spam demon dance. In fact I lose my key a lot faster. Trying to use this. So normally I use the other one. Just because it gives me some extra damage. But you know here's the thing. The damage that you get from this. Really isn't all that much. I will say that I think you will notice it more on bigger enemies like bosses, but against normal enemies, you normally won't even notice it. So that is something. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the gear. Now, I've already actually talked about the accessories, but I will quickly let you look at them. I recommend these stats for the most part. The luck is optional because if you don't care about getting more drops, then you don't need the luck. I do like the magic power though. I do think that's important. I like the defense as well. Now on this one, I don't have the luck. I have the burn accumulation. I already talked about that. That's mainly for the Tonfa guns. Now when it comes to my armor, the set bonuses I'm using for the Tonfas is the Warrior of the East and the Master Swordsman. I'm combining the two. Now if you actually look at all my stats here, I do have inheritables on here. I inherited life from a chess piece and attack from gauntlets. Now they added in the orange inheritable. That's one of the best things they added in because those are incredible. You can add extra skills to your armor. Normally your armor is only going to come with four skills plus maybe a set bonus or a skill that is always on there. You cannot remove it. And then you can actually add two extra skills. So in total you will have six skills. So being able to inherit attack on every single piece, life from a chest piece, it will really add up. So that is amazing. And I normally will do a normal inheritable, which is the life in this case. And then I'll do an orange inheritable, which is the attack in this case. Now the set bonus for the Warrior of the East, I like it a lot. The first one is for the spear. It doesn't really matter. The next one is damage taken, minus 3%. That's good. And then after that, we got 4% melee damage. That's great. And then finally, we have attack bonus constitution. I have 99 constitution. This is a tank build. I want as much health as possible. So because of that, I have 99 and this will, of course, benefit me. Now the Master Swordsman set, if you want to take a look at the armor, go right ahead and see what I have on here. But once again, I have life and attack. You're going to see that on every piece. And I'm going to talk about a couple things that are a little bit different because the gauntlet and the chest piece is slightly different. But with the Master Swordsman set, the main reason I went for this is because of the active skill key consumption minus 10%. When you are demon dancing and you're spamming that, you're going to be blowing through a lot of key. So having that minus 10% is really nice. Also, I get the 252 health. Now, I guess I should actually say, if you want to get this armor, you will have to get proficiency up with dual swords and then farm the Grandmaster in the dojo. You can get the armor from him by getting drops. Or you can get the sniffing text. I normally recommend getting the sniffing text. 
Warrior of the East, he's in the third region, so he's actually, you know, fairly early in the game. You can farm him to get the smithing tax. Or in New Game Plus, you can unlock the third region fairly quickly and then farm him there to get the armor. Now, for the gauntlets, one thing you're going to notice is that I actually have attack on the gauntlets because attack can come on the gauntlets. I don't need to inherit attack onto the gauntlets. The life, that was from a chess piece. I inherited that normally. And if you don't know how to inherit, by the way, you will just get something with the inheritable stat on it, max out the familiarity, and then absorb it through soul matching, and you can add it on there. And if you are forging your armor, one thing I will also say is that I personally think it's always best to not have an inheritable on your armor or weapon when you originally get it. That way, when you inherit something like a normal inheritable with the white icon, you're just adding an extra skill on there. So that's why I choose to do that. But like I said, I don't need to put attack on this because I could put that on normally. So what I did in this case was I took an orange inheritable, one that was really crappy. I don't even know what it was, but it was really bad. I took that, I maxed out the familiarity, I added it on here, and then I just tempered it away until I actually got equipment drop rate just because I think that's better than what it was. But there you go. That's something you can do, and it's cool. I really like that. And I will actually show this as well, just in case somebody doesn't know. I actually have one of these right now. It has orange inheritable attack. People are dropping these now. If you're wondering how I got this, I got this from just farming random Revenants. People are equipping this. They are dropping it. Same with life on the chest piece. I have another one that actually has orange inheritable life on the chest piece. So it's just something that you can actually do. That's great. Now the chest piece, you can look at the stats. In this case, I took some gauntlets that had a normal inheritable of attack. I inherited it on here. And then what I did was once again, I took a crappy orange inheritable. I didn't waste a good like, you know, orange life inheritable but i took a crappy one inherited that on here and then i tempered it until i got life so that's what i did in this case if you're wondering and then for the helmet same deal i got attack i got life i just didn't inherit it on it now one thing with the helmet is that the helmet can get luck and that will cap out at 13 so if you're farming revenants, you will notice people are also dropping orange inheritable luck on the helmet. That is something I've seen. So if you want to put luck on every single piece, you can do so. If you can farm them up, you can actually get them. You know what I'm going to do real quick? I'm going to actually show you the three missions to actually check out and farm if you're trying to get orange inheritables. Because these are the best three missions. One is in region two. It's a mysterious one night castle. People are always dropping off into the water. Normally, people are falling off of cliffs or dropping off into water. And then the other two areas I like to go to farm for inheritables from Revenants is the Mausoleum of Evil. And then the final one is the Cherry Blossom Viewing. This is another great mission because right away in the beginning, there's like a cliff. And I've noticed a lot of people are actually killing themselves with really good inheritables in that spot. And same with this one. It's right away in the beginning. People jump off the map and they kill themselves. So if you want to farm for orange inheritables, those are the three missions I recommend checking out and farming until you can actually get some really good inheritables to really complete your build. Now let's talk about the gun. I do have the Warrior of the West bow equipped, but I do not use it. I never use it, to be honest. I only have it on just to get that life because I have the Yazakani Magatama. I can equip this and I get 164 life, so why not? But in terms of actually using a ranged weapon, I normally always use rifles. Hand cannons are also very powerful, but they're slow. The rifle is kind of like the best in terms of just all-rounder. So I like to use this as my ranged weapon. Now, if you notice, I have item drop rate on here. I have it twice. It's like over 10%, pretty much 11%. I have that on there because I can benefit from that. If I'm farming for smithing tax against humans, which most humans are dropping smithing tax, this will help. The damage bonus agility, that's normally what I recommend. As long as you are actually in the green, which is B agility. And by the way, I am using nothing but heavy armor here. I'm a big fan of heavy armor, so I like to use it, mainly for the toughness. If you have toughness, then you're not going to be stunned as easily, which is great. But 
the armor I'm using here is actually really light for heavy armor. So you really do not need a ton of stamina or strength to really equip this. So when I talk about clans, we're really going to get into that. But I do like this. Agility damage bonus is what I normally recommend. Equipment lightness is another one that you can benefit. Your melee weapon can benefit from that. But to really utilize that, you have to be using really light gear, which I'm not. I'm using heavy armor. And then the other one is enemies defeated. That one's really not that good either. It's barely noticeable. More than likely, the agility damage bonus is also barely noticeable. But why not? That's what I say. Now, the other weapon I have on is a spear. I could upgrade this and I could use it. I'm a big fan of spear. I'm not using it for this build but it is an option. Another weapon you could use for this exact setup, because this is a constitution build, basically. You could use a spear as your main weapon, you could use a switchblade as your main weapon, and you can actually use the tonfas. Now, the tonfas I have on is the gun sticks. I chose these because they automatically come with tonfa gun. If you want to put tonfa gun on other tonfas, you're going to have to actually temper it and it can take forever. And I just don't want to waste my time. So I just go for the gun sticks. I don't know how to farm for these. You know, there are places where you can get the smithing text. You can look it up. There is a whole wiki page that will tell you every single location of every single smithing text. I've been using it recently. It's really good. But I definitely think that these are the best tonfas just because they come with tonfa gun. There is no set bonus that I know of with Tomfas right now in the game, which is kind of crazy. Now with this one, I inherited that attack bonus stamina. I got that from a revenant that I was farming. Now, a lot of people actually asked me in my last video, what do I think is the best attack bonus? Because you have some options in this game. You have attack bonus stat, where in my case it's stamina. You have melee damage, which I believe is 4% to start with. And I want to say maybe it goes up to 6%, but it might not. I'm not sure. And then the other one that you can grab is Familiarity Damage Bonus. So those are like the three big ones. Now in Neo 1, you could stack all of that together. So you could have Change to Attack, Stamina A+. You could have Familiarity Damage Bonus A+. And you could actually have Close Combat Damage 20%, which was basically Melee Damage. So you could stack that all together and get a ton of damage. In this game, you can't do that. So I could be wrong on this, but I personally do think that the attack bonus stat is the best as long as you have 99 in that stat. In terms of your base damage, you will notice your base damage will go up like 100 and something points when you have attack bonus stat with 99 in that stat. So... That's something I've noticed, you know, maybe the melee damage is better because if it is 6%, maybe that will equal better results. I'm just not sure. But for now, I've been using attack bonus stat and I feel like it's probably the best, but I could be wrong. I have burn accumulation on this for the Tonfa guns. I have grapple damage because with Tonfas, you're going to be getting a lot of grapples. It's really nice. I have melee key damage. That's great. And I have melee key consumption. I have that because that's just universal. It makes it so that every attack you do will consume less key. So I like that. And also life drain, melee attack. I'll be honest, I personally feel like that's a really bad effect most of the time. But because this is a healing build, a tank build, why not? That's what I say. And I did actually put an orange inheritable on to get that. Once again, you can take an orange inheritable, one that's crappy, add it to your weapon, and you just, just temper it. Just keep tempering it until you get a good stat. So that's a really cool thing you can do in Neo 2. Now, let's talk about the Guardian Spirit and also the Soul Cores. But the main Guardian Spirit I like to use is Tenji. This is the one I recommend because it is amazing. I loved it in Neo 1. I love it in Neo 2. But it has Stance Base Amorita Bonus. And what that does, I'll actually highlight it because why not, is that it's going to give you increased defense if you're in mid stance and you absorb Amarita. If you're in low stance, you get increased key recovery speed. But if you're in high stance, you get increased attack. Now, the damage bonus from this is actually really nice. In fact, all the buffs are really, really nice. But that's why I like to stay in high stance because that increased attack is actually huge. If you test it out, 
it is amazing in terms of the damage you get from having Tenji as your guardian spirit. Now, to be honest with you, all of the rest of the bonuses are actually pretty good, and I like them as well. Now, my secondary spirit, I'm not going to try to pronounce the names here. I don't want to massacre that, but this one has damage taken mid-attack minus 7.5%. I like that. When I'm demon dancing, if I'm getting hit, I'm taking less damage, so that is really nice. Now, when it comes to the soul cores, this is actually really important. But I do want to say that the very first one I have on there, once again, I'm not going to try to pronounce names, but it actually has an attunement cost of 11. So what that means is that if you want to switch that and use the final boss's soul core, which is the most overpowered soul core in the game, I'm surprised they haven't nerfed it yet, but it can flat out like just kill bosses for you. It's that powerful. If you want to use that, go right ahead. You can just swap the one I have on there now and put on that final boss soul core, and you should be good to go. Now, the reason why I chose that one is because, first of all, I've used the final boss's soul core so much, I'm kind of tired of it. I just don't want to use it anymore. But I do like that one, and that is because whenever you have that on, if you absorb Amarita, you will actually get an increased defense bonus. And I also like the attack on that one as well. There's another boss soul core that will give you increased movement speed when you absorb Amarita. So once again, you know, both of those I think are potentially really good. And this is nice because in the future, if you're watching this and then the final boss's soul core is nerfed, then I would recommend the soul cores I currently have on. Now the second soul core, which is the Thunderstorm, that is actually the little floating heads. Each floating head, the different elements have a soul core. You can farm for them. They're kind of a pain to get, but I'm using the lightning one. You can also use the water one. I wouldn't recommend the fire one. Because we have Tonfa guns, we can apply fire with our Tonfa guns. We have the purification talisman to apply that to help us with confusion. But in a middle of a boss battle, what you can do is apply the purification effect and then immediately use your soul core, get a lightning buff or get a water buff, and apply that, and now you have the enemy under confusion. Especially if the boss will resist the fire from the Tonfa gun, which there's a lot of fire bosses in this game. So a lot of them will resist it. But they might not resist lightning, and they might not resist water. So it's up to you on which one you want to use, but that's why I'm using that, and it is amazing. I really like that a lot. Plus, when you have that on there, you can use that to just constantly buff yourself. So you don't actually have to use a lot of like a weapon buff. And that's just really cool. And then the final soul core I have on, that one, I'm using it mainly because, once again, it will give you damage taken mid-attack. So it's like 10%, I think, when you max that one out at level 9. So overall, I have a minus 17.5% damage taken when I'm attacking. So I think that's really, really great. So that is the Guardian Spirit plus the Soul Cores. Now, let's actually talk about my stats and what I chose to do here. Now, I have 99 Constitution. Now, one thing you might notice is I only have 27 Courage. The Tonthas primarily scale with Courage. I forgot to bring this up when I was talking about the weapon itself, but I remodeled it so that it will scale with Constitution better than Courage. It has an A- minus scaling in Constitution. Now, if you look at my base attack on the right side, my second melee weapon is 2250. That's my Tonfa. If I was to actually get 99 Courage, and then I was to remodel the Tonfa to scale primarily with Courage, which would up it to an A, what would end up happening is I would end up having a 22, like, 80 attack. So I would get, like, 30 extra attack. It's really not that big of a difference. So, of course, I prefer to have the Constitution. I want as much health as possible. So that's a really cool thing you can do in Neo 2, is that it gives you a lot of build diversity if you are remodeling your weapons or your armor to help fit your build. Now, with my armor, by the way, I remodeled it to all be extremely heavy. And honestly, it still isn't heavy. So if you're wondering about that, that's what I did with the armor. So I have 23 heart. If you actually take a look on the bottom there, left side, you can see my key. My key is 1301. With the passive from the Tonfas, it will go up to 1351. 
that's more than enough key in my opinion to be fine. My key recovery speed is 404, and I think that's more than enough key recovery speed. Plus, I'm using the barrier talisman, and because of that, I have insane key recovery. So 27 courage I think is fine, but courage will also give you a little bit of magic power. When I talk about magic, I think that's one of the most important stats, so I'm really going to break that down. But my stamina is at 99. That is mainly for my clan. I don't need 99 stamina with this armor. This armor is pretty light. In fact, I'm pretty sure I can drop that down to like 60 and I can put the points somewhere else. But because of my clan, I want 99 stamina. I'm going to explain that next. My strength is 12. That is just for the stat requirements, actually, to use my armor. My skill is 5. That's the fault. My dex is 6. I got it up to 6 just so I can equip two quick change scrolls that's my one ninja ability and i want to have at least two on where if you get that up to 10 by the way you can have three so that's an option if you want to do that my magic my magic is at 71 now the reason why it's there is because i think that the magic power level that you want is 600 i personally feel like that is like the magic number whenever i have 600 magic power i've noticed that my buffs last for a really good duration. I'm able to apply my weakness talisman in co-op, no problem, one talisman, and it also has good duration in co-op. And I can even apply the sloth talisman, I think, with one talisman, and it has an okay duration. So I think that 600 magic power is really all you need, and that's, like, awesome. Now, to get that, though... Either you have to level up your magic really high, or you can level it up pretty high, like what I did, to 71. Plus, I have 27 courage, which gave me a little bit of magic power as well. And then on every piece of my armor, I have magic power, just to add that extra magic power onto there. And then, on top of that, on my accessories, I have magic power, which those are like 21, so it's like 42 total. Plus, I have my titles, so my titles is adding up some magic power. But I do think that 600 magic power is really the number you should be trying to get. If you want to have really good duration, and you want to be able to apply your talismans like the weakness talisman in co-op, I think 600 is the magic number. Now, let's talk about the clan. Now, the thing about the clan is that this is kind of an optional thing, okay? Because I'm max level. If you're not max level, I actually have a different recommendation for you than the clan I'm going to recommend. But I'm in Toto. Now, if you actually look, it has life bonus stamina C, damage bonus equipment weight C. I actually got this question in my last video. But the longer you are in a clan, so I think it takes maybe two weeks. But after like two weeks of being in a clan, those numbers do change. So like... My true number is A, life bonus stamina, and A, damage bonus equipment weight. That's actually amazing. So, the reason I have such high health is because I have 99 constitution and I have 99 stamina. So, I'm getting a life bonus for having that stamina. Toto is kind of a tryhards clan, in my opinion. And the reason why is because of Neo 1. In Neo 1, if you were doing the super in-game activity, the Abyss, and you got to the higher floors you were being one-shotted. To help mitigate that, you would need like really powerful defensive armor, heavy armor, that would give you a lot of damage reduction, and you would need a lot of life. So, Toto was like the best clan for that. It would give you life, and you would get damage from the equipment weight, plus you would be wearing heavy armor because, well, you need that damage reduction. So, that's why Toto was so popular in Neo 1. And a lot of people in it currently are veterans of Neo 1. That's something I've noticed. But it is a really good clan. It's my favorite clan in the game. And I'm trying to convince everybody to join, okay? Please, come on. We gotta win. Now, the other clan I recommend, though, is actually the Experience Clan. Once again, these numbers will go up the longer you're in the clan. I'm not sure on what they eventually will, like, max out at. But I want to say it might be, like, 30% chance for that Amorita thing to actually happen. And the life recovery might go up to 30 or 30 something, which would be awesome. So, yes, this clan is actually great because if you're not max level, this will help you get max level. 
But on top of it, you get life recovery and Marita absorption. That's what we're doing with this build. It just makes the most sense. So that's what I would recommend. Join this clan if you're not max level. Once you hit max level, you can join Toto. Because everybody should join Toto. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. All right. So I think that's everything. I'm pretty sure I have covered basically everything I could possibly cover. I did forget about a couple things like the remodeling. Sorry about that. I forgot to bring that up when I was showing it. But it is an A- minus constitution scaling. So I really love that. I love Neo 2 for a lot of the technical things that they did to really like help with build diversity. And being that we don't have to deal with living weapon builds anymore where every build is just some type of different version of a living weapon build. You have a ton of build diversity, so I really like that. So now, I'm going to run through a level, I'm going to show this build off, and I'm going to level sync it so it's going to nerf me somewhat. That way you can see that as well. But, I'm still going to absolutely destroy everything. Alrighty guys, well, this is going to be the gameplay. This is actually the final side mission in the game. Now, if you haven't beaten the game, there could be a spoiler in here. I'm assuming that most people who are watching an in-game Tonfa build has already beaten the game. But just in case you're someone who hasn't played the game yet, maybe haven't bought it, do they just want to see some stuff, there could be a spoiler in here, especially if you played the first game. So, be warned. Alright, but this is one of my favorite missions to honestly run through. It's not super long, there's a lot of enemies to kill. It's a really good area to test, and also farm for loot and stuff. I like this mission a lot. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and buff up. And honestly, the Steel Talisman is so optional. Like, you just don't really need it. Like, my defense is strong enough as is. And with my health regen, it's out freaking rageous. So, let's go into Demon Dance. Now, one thing you can pay attention to here, besides, obviously, the insane amount of health regen. I mean, look at that. Whenever I'm doing Demon Dance, you can actually see it on the screen now. You see all those, like, damage numbers I'm taking, like the 207s and all that? That was from Demon Dance, because I was draining my health. But did you notice it? Probably not. Ooh, get out of here with that. You probably didn't notice it, because it didn't matter. My health regen was way stronger. How is this guy still alive? Now, most enemies, by the way, are going to... I don't know if they're weak to fire, but they are definitely not resistant to fire. Like these guys, you can apply fire to them super easy, and that just means easy confusion. Once they're confused, they are dead. Now for most normal enemies, it doesn't really matter much because you're probably going to kill them anyway, like so quick that it's just not going to matter. But against bosses, that's when it really comes in and just becomes crazy. Because whenever you get confusion on an enemy, you can just stun lock that enemy to death. As long as you can keep attacking. And Tonfas are really good at attacking. Alright, so right here, I'm going to use my Soul Core. And one thing about the Soul Core, by the way, I feel like the elemental damage that you get from the Soul Core is actually way better than the elemental damage that you can get from a Talisman. So that's kind of an interesting thing. And I really like these Soul Cores a lot. Alright, let's go ahead. As you can see, this is kind of how I like to play the build. I like to do a lot of high stance, like light attacks and stuff. But, at the same time... Oh no. At the same time, I like to use my Tomfa Guns a lot. So normally, I like to start with Tomfa Gun, and then I'll follow that up with a Demon Dance if they're still alive. Although, most enemies are dead. That's... Kind of how it goes. If I do multiple, like, light attacks, I mean, look at that. Easy confusion, but he's pretty much dead at that point. So, one thing I'll do is I'll do one light attack and then do the Tomfa gun immediately afterwards. And remember, this comes from Devastation. That's the skill. One thing about Tomfas as well, I can say, is that you can miss attacks with these fairly easily. It's something that can happen. So just keep that in mind. Like sometimes the enemies will move and you'll just completely miss your Tomfa gun. Or they'll move when you're doing demon dance and you're just swinging in the air. 
So that's kind of annoying when that happens, but it does happen, and I want to point that out. All right, let me go ahead and buff again. And after this room, I can make it pretty much the boss. I will use a purification talisman, because why not? You know, I like these so much just because it's so quick to actually apply that effect. And against yokais in general, Tomfas are really good at just draining their key. And once their key is gone, you're going to just destroy them. Alright, so let's go ahead and smack him with that. Go into Demon Dance, and look how quick that was to get that effect on him. Boom. Ah, nice. Beautiful. Okay, so there's a bigger guy. I want to get on him right away if I can. Oh my god, look at that damage, man. That is nuts. Now, it's always best to try to get a, like, perfect key pulse. I always say chi, I know. People were actually, like, downvoting my last video because I say chi. It's just a bad habit. I don't know why. I just have a habit of, like, calling something wrong. And then I've been calling it wrong since, like, the first game. And it's just a bad habit to break, although I know I'm saying it wrong. You know, so I apologize for that. But whenever you're doing a key pulse, like, basically, if you can execute that, you're going to get that extra damage. It's really nice. And it is something you should be doing. But a lot of times, you know, even myself, I don't have the patience for that. So I'll just go into it right away. And that's one of the things about, like, the other Grandmaster ability. It lets you cancel out into Demon Dance. But that also means you're not going to be getting your perfect key pulses so you're not getting that extra damage now these birds these guys can easily be affected by fire so i could actually put the fire effect on him man look at this man look, look at this these burst attacks everywhere get on some oh my god so many of them there we go all right well we're about to destroy this boss that's for sure all right, come on, spawn in. Now we're just going to attack him until we get that on him. Now we can use this, boom, boom, boom. And it's time to melt him. Just go crazy. All right, let's look at the health regen. Let's take a look at that. Isn't that insane? Now the small numbers, by the way, the 15s that you're seeing, that is coming from the life drain melee attack that I have on, actually, the weapon. So, it's not very much. 15 is pretty bad. It all adds up. You know, it's good. Whatever. But that was a crap ton of health regen. And I was draining my health in the process. But once I had that confusion on that guy, like I said, the fight was over. So I love this build. It's a lot of fun, guys. And it's just unkillable. I really do believe that. I don't know if I have died with this build. I guess technically I might have if my buffs ran out and I didn't realize it. But it is amazing. Alrighty, well that's going to do it for this video. I really hope that you have enjoyed it and that this has helped. If it has, will you please like the video for me? Be sure to subscribe. I will be posting more Neo 2 content builds you know maybe some other videos or tutorials but mainly builds so be sure to subscribe if you are interested and also click the bell if you don't click the bell you can't stay notified so click the bell if you want to actually get notifications and i do appreciate it thank you very much and i really do hope that everyone has a very nice day and peace so